Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Mobox. In this graphics video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to use the light tool to create intricate shadows um, to save you time instead of creating keyframes for the shadow effect in two dimensions with how much um, the, the distance is, stuff like that. So this will kind of give you a light where any object in the scene will be lit and cast shadows. So we're just gonna be jumping in After Effects here, creating a new composition, tutorial. Uh, I believe this is 13, so we'll just do 13. So um, 1080p, 60 frames a second, 15 seconds looks good. We're just going to hit OK. So we're going to go layer new solid and we're just going to create a white background and that white looks good. Solid white, it's perfect. We're gonna making it a 3D layer. That way it can accept shadows. Um, let's see if it actually has the option right now. So we'll do cast shadows off, um, accept shadows on. So it's already on, it can already accept shadows. So we're just going to be creating a uh, a few just little squares um, or rectangles, however you want to call them, um, just to kind of showcase. And um, this is actually going to be heavily, well, this is not heavily based on, this is exactly based on um, something I found online, which was in regard to um, Google's material design um, and how layers are three-dimensionally rendered on screen. So um, I'll link that in the description or I'll show it on screen somewhere. So um, to satisfy um, Google's uh, material design guidelines, we're just gonna make this rectangle have some um, rounded edges and to make it a little bit easier, I'm actually just gonna make the background invisible. So uh, maybe 10, does that look round enough? That looks almost, that. you know what, that looks perfect. So we'll just leave that. So basically during this time, I just spent an abnormally long amount of time trying to figure out how to get the shapes right. All I did was I simply duplicated them, um, changed the dimensions, and just separated them out so they were evenly distributed across the screen. Good. So I'm just going to make... Oh, actually, another thing I need to do. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to rename all of these. I'm going to use my name tool. You could right-click them and hit rename. And I'm just going to name these cards or card. I'll just rename them in order. Um, that way the card on top, middle bottom and I'm also just going to um, make these three-dimensional objects so um, I just press that square in doing so I'm also going to actually make these lift up in the Z direction that way they can cast shadows below the object so I'm gonna make them I don't know negative 10 is probably appropriate so I'm just gonna copy and paste that in all of them make the background visible again now of course it's all the same color so we can't see them layer new light so now we're jumping into the light there's four options parallel we're not even going to look at spot is like a spotlight um, with the outsides being dark point is the same thing except for without the dark edges and some little kind of weird quirks and then ambient does not allow shadows at all it just kind of puts like a a piece of glass over the screen so maybe it's a piece of red glass or something like that but we're not going to be looking at that we're going to be taking a look at the spot light so i'm just going to press ok and that is pretty strange so for these cards, I need to make them to allow shadow casting. So come to material options and cast shadows to on. And that worked for all of them. So I'm just gonna close these up like that. And now I'm gonna get into the properties of this light. So um, <laughs> it's gonna be kind of strange, but I already have the properties here that I wanna use for the light. And the reason is, is because it took a long time to figure out what the what a good light was to match material design. Um, but I'll kind of just show you so that way um, you could use the exact same numbers if you'd like, or you can kind of just mess with these. So transform, we don't really need to mess with that at all. Um, intensity, 100% is probably good. Um, cone angle, we're gonna increase this all the way up to 180. That way it's freaking ginormous and we get rid of the black around the outside. Um, cone feather, I'm gonna increase up to Let's see, what should we increase this up to? Um, maybe like right there, looks probably good, 52%. Fall off is fine, radius is fine. Um, fall off distance looks fine. Maybe, see what that does, looks fine to me. Um, shadow darkness, we'll maybe do, I don't know, maybe 52% probably looks good. And shadow diffusion, um, we do want some diffusion there in that light. So I, what I had before was 1390. So that's the diffu diffusion we're getting, but I believe that that's a little too high, so I'm gonna do just a thousand. So 
there we have it. Now we have our cards in place and they are casting shadows behind it. So we're just gonna create a little animation here so that you could better visualize um, the fact that these are objects in space in three dimensions. So I'm gonna press P on the keyboard and I wanna change the positions here. So what I want is this first card to kind of pop up, come down to the point of this bottom card and have these two bottom cards move up. So I'm gonna take these keyframes here for the bottom two because I first want the first card to pop up. So let me just make sure that this is absolutely perfect. So I want this top card to move up to 45. That way it, it gives a nice diffusion and I believe maybe we are even diffusing a little too much or we need to increase the darkness of the shadow, maybe decrease the diffusion by a few hundred, maybe 800 looks good, maybe even, okay. That looks oddly kind of more in line with, with what we wanted. So I'm just gonna roll with it, I don't know. Looks good to me. So it comes up <laughs> and so that's 30 seconds. It's a second, so a second's probably good. So we want this, so we want this card to be in the place of the third card. So we're gonna copy the, the keyframe from the third card and paste it up onto the, onto the first card. I want the second card to come up to the position of the first card. Copy that position keyframe. I want the third card to go into the position of the second card. Also what we want is we want the card position one to be back up to the negative 45 height. And then we want to give it a half a second to collapse down to the negative 10. What we also want is I think we want the second card to kind of, or the third card to have kind of a little lag behind. So one, two, three, four, five. It's probably fine. And we'll also do this here. One, two, three, four, five. So that way it kind of pops up, comes down, and then comes back down. But you notice how it kind of has a rocking effect? It's because we're using Bezier paths. We're just going to highlight these, right click, go to keyframe interpolation, and turn these to linear. That way we don't do any unnecessary calculations in between the steps. So that looks really good already. I'm just gonna add some easing to these, which you could do by right clicking, going to easy ease. I'm gonna be using my tool over here, which you can get a uh, link down in the description. It's about 35 bucks, but I use it all the fricking time. It's totally worth it. Um, saves me so much time. So let's just take a look at exactly how this looks. So it comes up, comes down. And by the way, this is gonna eat up your processor and your RAM because we are rendering this in three dimensions. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> So there it is, it comes down right, there it is. I don't know what those sounds were, just stick with me. Cool, that looks really cool. So just to give you a better idea of exactly what's happening, um, I'm gonna bring this into a different dimension. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna create a new layer, layer new null object. I'm gonna copy all of these. Well, I'm not gonna copy them, I'm just gonna drag them to the null object. So now when I move the null object, it will move everything. And again, I made it a three dimensional layer. This white background, I'm gonna to have to increase the size to like a thousand. Um, and you'll see why. The reason is, because I'm gonna set a position keyframe and some rotational keyframes. I want this to kind of, uh, let's see, how do I want it? I wanna kind of angle this and if it wasn't big enough, the, then the background would be cut off back there. So that's kind of the look I want. So perfect. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to affect the, the these the lights um, properties. So. Um, light options because you notice how it's pretty dark back there I think I mean we could change the the properties of this light to kind of better allow us to, to see what's going on in that new view so I can set keyframes to all of these such as intensity feather which I'm gonna increase probably anyway um, uh, radius um, shadow darkness all these I could just do as many as I'd like um, a big one I'm gonna do is position um, P on the keyboard, position U on the keyboard to see all of my keyframes. E, that one needs to be adjusted. Perfect. 
come over to these keyframes and now I could kind of make some adjustments. So I'll probably bring the light up a tad. Maybe increase the intensity just a, a little bit as well. And um, so yeah. So that way it kind of lights up the whole area um, well enough. So I, I kind of get a, the, the both of both effects um, really well. So now I'm going to add these easing uh, structures in there. So what I get is something that then turns. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually also going to make the background turn to a different color. So I can select this background layer and go layer uh, effect, or, yeah, effect generate fill. Set a keyframe here. I'm going to change the color to white, just like it was. Press you on the keyboard so I can see the keyframe. Come down to this point when we're in our final position and decrease the background color until I get a, a nice dark color. And I will again, um, actually for this I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, an, an, I guess I don't know what that is, but it, it just, let me see if I could find a name of it. It's a, just a Bezier um, ease, easing. Um, and, it's, and it's a case of when you mix multiple different easing effects. It just, it's basically having no easing but it just makes it a little bit smoother. Um, it does some more calculations. So you see we turn and now we have it like that. So uh, upon further inspection, I'm not going to do that. I am going to add the same effect across the board because I thought that that looked a little goofy. There. So now um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this exact same thing um, except for back here. So I want the card, so how did, how did we have this? So the first card went to the bottom, so now we want the second card, we're going to copy these keyframes here, we're just going to copy them on the, to that uh, object, and we want, so, we, so we're going to have the second card go to the bottom, now we're going to need I'm just gonna line that up. Now we're gonna need this this the second card, which is really the third card, to move up to where the first card was. So we need the third card. This is really confusing. My head's starting to hurt. Okay, well let's start actually from the top. We need this. We need the the first card to go where the third card now is. So, but that was before the second card. So I'm gonna copy the second card's keyframes and paste them on that. Is that going to give us what we want? Yes, that will give us what we want. Um, now I'll just line these up. No, nope, that will not give us what we want. Um, hmm. Okay, well let me, let me just think about this for a second. If the top card is now on the bottom, so now the bottom card is the third card. The third card then moved up to the second card, so I need to copy the third cards keyframes and paste them on the top and line them up. Okay, that shouldn't have taken me that long to figure out, but it totally did. So now I need what is now the, <laughs> what is now the, you know what, I believe I just need to copy these keyframes and paste them here. Because now I'm just getting way too confused. Yep, that's exactly what I need and now I'm just gonna line these up appropriately. So I'll kind of show you a little bit, a little bit more clearly exactly what's going on, and that, and that in the third dimension, every all the information is still maintained. So that's really good. That's that looks really awesome. Let's take a look at that again in full speed. Perfect. Now, um, I think that is all we really want to do. I mean press N on the keyboard to close it off there, but 
This should give you pretty much exactly what you're looking for if you're looking to kind of get an easy tutorial on how to use the light functions and kind of what kind of effects it can give you in After Effects. So um, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give a like, please subscribe, check out my other tutorials. I appreciate all the support. Um, these do take a lot of time to do and come up with, but um, I, I really enjoy doing it. So anyways, I'm just going to let this play out for you um, in the final render. And uh, yeah, anyways, guys, thanks for watching.